Okay, um, I'm glad to have Felix here on the channel. Um, we did actually another video together um, back uh, a couple of days ago on Felix's channel. And uh, I'm glad to have you this time to talk about some um, yeah, topics around NEO and options. So I think you have a very good understanding of this topic. And um, so I'm glad to have you, Felix. And uh, maybe you can start off with a quick introduction for those who don't know you yet. Marcel, I'm absolutely delighted to be here. Thank you so much for uh, for uh, arranging this. Uh, we had a, a fun video the other day. We're ch chatting about Neo a lot. Um, so today, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about options, and um, I do a lot of options trading. I also teach options trading. So we're going to look a little bit at what the options are, literally, for trading Neo into the end of the year, Neo Day, where we're hoping for some catalysts coming up. So uh, Marcel, I really appreciate that. Um, do you want to? Do a little bit of a background of where we are with NEO first, and then we'll take it from there. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, maybe first off, let's start with some of the legal issues as well. So uh, none of this in this video is uh, supposed to be financial advice. We just yeah, basically talk around these uh, topics for educational purposes and to try to give you a better understanding. And it's not meant to yeah, either recommend a buy, um, sell or anything. But basically, we're going to talk through um, the situation today uh, with Neo stock and also kind of, um, yeah, maybe from our personal experience, I'm I going to throw some of the call options that I've personally been buying and also well kind of get your feedback onto that um, yeah what does it mean and uh, what I possibly also could do better so maybe <laughs> first I'm yeah bringing up the chart here for for Neo because uh, I just did the video the other day um, about that Neo uh, yeah stock price seems to be um, not going as well as many of you have possibly anticipated or expected. And I've gave the reasons for that. And so, well, uh, it's obviously that we are still trading in this huge wedge pattern, right? With this downtrend and support being somewhere here. And now uh, this may be actually also an interesting setup uh, in terms of looking into options and how options can be used for um, yeah, um, playing the fundamentals here because of course, we also have some um, interesting things coming up now uh, with Neo Day pretty soon, also November deliveries. And also, we just got the news that Neo has completed the offering, which also, well, frankly, most of the retail investors have been pretty um, yeah, fearful about. So let's see how this could actually influence um, options or well, the trades that can be done around options. But uh, maybe Felix, first of all, jump into a little bit what um, options are actually uh, mean and uh, how they can be used. Okay, let me just sort of very generally explain actually what the options contract is and, and how that um, how that actually functions. Uh, so I'll show you a really, really basic drawing, like a, like a child's drawing, essentially, because uh, that's really all there is. So you have a buyer, you have a seller, like in any stock transaction. In the middle, you have a share certificate. Not that you have them anymore physically, but you have them virtually. And the way it works is, imagine for a moment, you have an apartment and it's worth $100,000. And I say to you, actually, sorry, say your apartment's worth $50,000, just to stick with the same numbers here. And I say to you, look, I want an option to buy your apartment. So I'm not going to buy it now, but I want to have the right to buy it at some time in the future at a fixed price. So I say to you, look, I'll buy your apartment in 10 years time at $100,000, but I'm not going to give you $100,000 for it. I'm only going to give you $50 for it plus an options premium right now of $10. So if your apartment then increases from its current value of $50,000 to $100,000, I, as the buyer, make a very nice profit because I paid $50 plus the $10 premium for having that right, that option to buy your apartment. And uh, what I then got was worth 100000 So that's essentially the basis of an options contract. It's really like the same sort of thing you get in business or many other transactions where people say, I just want to have a right to make this acquisition later, provided it hits a certain price point. And the only other 
addition from a stock transaction is that there is an expiration date. So there is a date by which this transaction has to be completed by, and it either becomes worthless or essentially the share gets, gets handed over one way or another. So you can be the buyer and you can be the seller. So you can pay an options premium, like when you buy a call option, which is what most people do when they start with options, you're always paying for this option. Me, on the other hand, 90% of the time, I'm the seller because I like getting the money up front. And there are also reasons for it, which we're going to dive into a little bit more of why that's often a good idea. So that's just it as a sort of real basic introduction of what a, what a contract really looks like. Yeah, awesome. And um, yeah, maybe once again, a little bit of a warning here for retail investors, stock option trading is really kind of um, very, um, like something very hard to do if you're not uh, familiar about uh, most uh, traders actually are losing money. And I can personally say from my personal experience, like um, I had some good runs. I also have some uh, really bad trades, um, but uh, I use it from time to time. So it's not really like uh, my main a way of, um, for instance, uh, yeah, trading NEO here, um, but it can be really a, a good um, kind of um, yeah, way of uh, having some additional gains there, here and there. So mm -hmm. once again, uh, jumping into the chart here, if I can, um, let me make this bigger. Um, so for instance, when NEO was selling off quite a bit, um, I personally uh, started selling some put options around this area here uh, in order to kind of um, play with the premium, which you just um, outlined. And, um, you know, sometimes there is the expectation um, that the stock could even fall a little bit further. And so um, that was a way of making some money during this period in time uh, when, uh, well, the NEO uh, stock, itself, uh, stock itself wasn't moving in the direction that um, I wanted it to. And then, um, yeah, of course, uh, when, when the stock is more like um, going really well, that may open the option to uh, sell uh, calls, for instance, in case that um, there is the expectation that this stock will not um, go any further. And now I think we're also in an interesting situation here because of this wedge pattern. And so, um, yeah, maybe let's throw two examples at you, uh, what I've just been doing. Um, so, um, and both both of these um, trades are rather lotto tickets, I call them, because they have a very, very high <laughs> um, uh, probability that uh, I will lose all of the money that I put into it. Um, one of it is very short term. So I bought a call option actually just by the end of last week, um, you know, during this small sell off here. I bought a call option with a 44 US dollar strike um, expiring at uh, the 10th of December. So that's quite near. And actually even before Neo Day. So that may actually not even be the best um, yeah, option into Neo Day if you would say that uh, maybe the stock will actually do better after Neo Day. Um, let's talk about this. And then I have a very long-term option, which is uh, expiring in January 2023 um, and is actually priced at a 100 US dollar strike. So I think uh, maybe even the, the highest strike that you can get. But um, I can say this, I'm already in the money with this call because I bought it, um, I think most of it, I bought it around here. So it's basically also a tactical trade um, because, um, you know, maybe you can also talk about this. Um, I don't necessarily have to wait until it actually reaches the strike in order to sell it, right? There are tactical Absolutely. implications around this as well. Absolutely. So I think to start with, you're completely right. If you don't fully understand options, it's a fairly risky thing to do. If you do fully understand options, it's far less risky than trading stocks and also much more lucrative. So I probably do five to 10 trades every Monday <laughs> and uh, often on stocks that I don't particularly like. So you kind of have to separate your mind from this long, I love neo stock fundamentals. I like, mm -hmm. therefore I invest in this for a long time and your unemotional options investor, where I, I bought, I did a trade with TMC, for example, the other day, not a stock I'd ever want to buy, random <laughs> things. And I look at it because the numbers look good and the probabilities look good. And what I we are hoping here to give you a little bit of a feel of is that there is actually a sort of science, the statistics that underlines options and that's what professional options traders use. They don't really look at a stock and say, ah, I have a feeling it's going to go up. Let's buy Let's buy the $100 call. Um, they look at <laughs> what's my probability here of making money? 
and what's my return and 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 and, and cost for this trade and also what's volatility and we're going to look at that a little bit here through the examples that uh, marcel you kindly thrown out so if i show you the first trade because you sent me these two trades in advance so I, I did a little bit of number crunching on these and um this is here your 44 dollar um december call right december 10th now the probability of that making a profit is 3.9 percent mm. now that doesn't mean, Marcel, you're going to lose money, but it's just statistically something that's very, very unlikely to make money. Therefore, for me, I only do trades that have 70 or 80 percent chance of success. And the reason I do those is that if I do that trade 10 times over the year or over the month, you know, I make money seven or eight times out, out, out of those 10. Um, now, why would I personally not do the trade. And there's also a reason why actually it isn't such a bad idea. And that's that the green area on here is where you make money. So you're, you're here today on you know the 21st or something like that. And as you move time-wise forward a week or so, the price has to go up for you to make money. So today you would be slightly in the money at $39, you know, ever so slightly. If you go forward a week at $39, you're now losing money, right? You're now down here. So this call of yours requires with time that the share price increases quite a lot. And the other challenge I think people have with the calls is that they buy this December 10 call. And then just as you mentioned, Marcel, they wait till December 10th. Well, on the December 10th, they're going to make almost nothing, $2. Whereas if they had sold out of this a little earlier, uh, they would have made a lot of money, right? So really the sweet spot ideally would be this little triangle up here uh, or anywhere kind of in the middle. You can see the, the numbers get bigger, of course. But if you get into a week in and Neo hops to say, you know, $42 or something, I would personally close out of the trade and take my profit because I know four days later, I'm losing money again at the same share price. So that's why call options uh, can be a little bit risky and um, people often wait far too long. So really the, the one thing I always recommend people do uh, is if you make say 10% of the maximum profit or 20% of the maximum profit, take it, take the money off the table and do another option straight. This is not the same world as uh, this is a conviction stock. I will never sell this. I'll still be holding this in 20 years time. Options are not that. Options are short term contracts to make income. And the way you do that is that when there is some money on the table, you, you, you take it. So that's my, my quick take on, uh, on your, your call option there. So it is just be aware of the risk that the stock price has to continuously keep rising during this time uh, if you want to keep holding these, these uh, call options. And now, uh, if you don't mind, sh shall I look at your January 2024 call, Marcel, as well? Um, yeah, just before you do that, um, I also sure. wanted to add, like, um, also, I think it's really uh, important the way you time the options buying. So, for example, the one that I've just mentioned, which is, once again, a very risky option, as I pointed out, and you've already shown, like, how uh, tiny the, the prospects are of this option to, um, you know, be become profitable. And um, but the, the, one of the major things is also that um, usually um, it's really good for dip buying in a way. Like if you had a really large, large down day, those um, options are usually because they are so volatile collapsing. And then um, that's what I sometimes like to do with such kind of lo lotto tickets, how I call them. Uh, pick them up very, uh, let's say, cheap because the, the premium is so low that, uh, of course, um, I'm not giving uh, too much of premium to the other side in that uh, at that point, but of course it's pricing uh, the risk. Of course, accordingly. Yeah, essentially the premiums are cheap because people look at the numbers at that point. It's been falling for a while. I mean, statistics are not a hundred percent accurate. Obviously, one of the yeah. reasons it says it only has a four percent chance of success is because near stock price has been falling for for the last you know ten days or something like that. So. That, of course, factors into it. So if you know something, if you fundamentally know something is about to change, then, you know, you can make it make a great deal of money on those. Exactly. All right. Let's jump into the 
the long term option then. <laughs> okay, so let me have a look at your um. So you, these you know leap options or you know long term options. So January twenty twenty four, I think you said a hundred dollar call. So this is what the profile looks like here. Basically, you start making money. Maybe you have the twenty twenty three. I I maybe I've got the wrong year here, but from yeah. the way I. I'm looking at uh, this. Okay, the, the concept will still be the same, even though Marcel is, is, is obviously in the money a little bit earlier. So if you bought a $2024, uh, January 2024, $100 call option, it would take um, basically Neo to go to about $30, $51 to start making a little bit of money. And then as you go forward, say, you know, you want to hold this, say, till June next year, then... Where do you need to be to start making some money? Well, $54, $60, you sort of start to get nicer profits here. Uh, and this chart basically goes up a little bit like that. So you can, as Marcel said, if you are in the money, close out of these. And that's what I would always recommend. I wouldn't say uh, buy this and hope that in 2023 or 2024, you'll be at $100. And that's really when you make a lot of money because the actually the maximum profit for you is this whole area up here. Yeah. That's your maximum profit range. So if the stock price does a, sp a wonderful spike, it's likely that it's going to dip again and it sort of do something like that, right? But when you get the opportunity to be up in here in real profit land, take it. And personally, I would also always take it if you're somewhere on the halfway mark or even 25% there because a profit's a profit and the rest is a gamble essentially on a horse. In terms of probability, 13% chance of, of making money with this. So not the greatest pure options trade. It's more of a, here is my favorite horse. I'm going to throw some money at it and I let's hope it turns out for the best. Uh, that's generally speaking how I view leap options. I think there are better strategies we can employ with higher chances of, of making money because this also locks up your capital, right? You paid a premium and you're going to have to wait uh, for a year or two or three if, if that's your, your time horizon. Exactly. And by the way, for the viewers, like where can they find this chart? I think this is um, option profit, uh, profitability calculator, right? Uh, the uh, absolutely. And... So what I'll, I'll do, actually, I'll put a link up here. If you don't mind, I'll put it on the top of the screen here. I'll put this link live here. So if you go to phoenixfriends.org slash neoday, the whole presentation, the, every chart and also every link and every resource that we, we use here uh, uh, is already in that. And if we talk about anything on the call, I'll add it to it. So uh, at the end of this uh, this uh, Google document, you can, you can get it because I want you to learn something from it. And all of the tools I'm using here are completely free to use as well. So there's nothing uh, paid for, nothing premium you need. Um, and if you start to dig into this a little bit, I, I think it'll help you to become a smarter options trader and 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 hopefully you'll you'll make a little bit more money, which is I think what the intention is really of us discussing stocks here is that people take less risks and, and get higher returns with with uh, less ups and downs. So if you see the link up here, felixfriends.org slash neo day. I'll put it on the on the screen again at the end as well. Uh, so you, you guys can take a note of it. Okay, cool. And so, Felix, maybe how about talking about some more refined, less risky option strategies that make more sense in your views? Um, I mean, it's not about refined. It's not anybody's right or wrong here. It's just <laughs> um, there are, you know, when you come from a, and I also came from a stock trading background. Um, mm -hmm. I, I worked in a, as a hedge fund strategist for a while and this sort of stuff, and we were trading stocks. Um, when you then learn options and someone teaches you options, your mindset is always on this kind of binary one directional move, right? You want, mm -hmm. typically we think about stocks going up. The next step is to think about stocks going down. The third step is really where options take you is to be neutral and not care and make money out of that not caring. So mm -hmm. for example, during earnings seasons, uh, I was doing tons of trades where basically you set a range and you say, if my say Uber stock is at $45. If it goes to $40 or to $50 in that range, I'll make money. And I couldn't care less whether it goes up 10% or down 10%. Really not invested at all. I just take my premium. I take my profit and I do uh -huh. that for a week. I do that for a month. And then I repeat and I keep doing those trades. They are really small trades. So I never throw everything at one because even if it's a 70 or 80% chance of success trade, it could be that the first three go against me, right? 
Um, mm. The way probably it's like throwing a, a, a coin, right? It's 50-50, but it could land on the wrong side uh, three times in a row. So you want to make sure that you don't destroy your capital. So you want to make sure you can make further trades so you can make your money back. So that's kind of the way I look at that. So I think one you mentioned to me earlier as well, Marcel, is um, this one here, selling puts. I think mm -hmm. this is a bit of a smarter trade than many for the very reason that it allows you some movement in both directions. So Marcel, you were saying you were near, you were selling puts. So what you do is, this is based on NEO. I just took these screenshots shots earlier today. So NEO is trading at about $39, uh, just under $40 at the moment, uh, post-market. So I'm saying here that, say, for NEO Day, December 18th or 17th, uh, I am selling one put at $35. So I'm selling it substantially below the, below the existing share price. And my existing share price is basically... Yeah. So that's where, you know, say $40 is right now. That's the stock price right now. By me selling this put below, significantly below the current share price, I make money until the stock drops to $34, so $34 basically, the little number down here. So it allows me to make money while the NEO stock drops up to $6. And unlimited on the way up. So I can go to $50, I still make money. So therefore, I quite like this because it gives me a bigger range. Now, what's my downside? There is a downside risk here, and that is an unlimited risk in theory. If NEO goes to zero, I have an obligation to buy the stock back at $35. And that, of course, could be very expensive if NEO goes out of business. Um, Seems unlikely with seven or eight billion dollars on the balance sheet that they will go out of business by December 18th. So for me, it's a risk worth taking. So the more realistic risk is therefore, say NEO goes for some strange reason to $30, then I am still obligated to um a pen looks a bit 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 crazy, doesn't it? I'll change to a normal <laughs> pen. Um I still have to pay $35, even though NEO is at 30 on the on the December 17th or 18th. So that is therefore my real risk is the difference between what I have to pay and where the share price is, provided it's below my, my $34 mark. So that's why you want to allow yourself a quite a big wriggle room between the current share price and where it goes. But as Marcel, as you were saying, it's really important to understand that you can sell this at any moment. So what I do is I set up alerts. So if I do this trade and NEO goes to, say, $36 or something like that, I'll get a little pop-up on my phone. I log in, I close the trade, and I still take a profit. That's why I like these trades. And this has, to show you here, 78% chance of profit. So even if I just leave this until the expiry, do nothing with it, it'll expire and I'll keep my money. And why keep my money? Because when you sell an option, you get money up front. So if this option, I get $106 credit up front and I don't have to give that back if the stock price stays above my, um, my, my, my cutoff here. So that's really where, where, why I quite like these trades. It moves somewhat in both directions. Uh, really, the only downside is, is that you are losing the opportunity to make money if, say, NEO goes to the moon up to $50 or $60. And you're not taking that profit in, but you, you, you do know what you're making. And you basically making about 30% return on this here. Um, and, and that calculation is very simple, really. You look at how much it affects your buying power by. Uh, so the, your brokerages will usually, if you have a margin account, show you exactly what that is. Or if you're in a cash account, they'll sort of lock up uh, the, a, a certain amount of money. Uh, in this case, $350. So if I make $100, it costs me $350. I make almost 30% uh, profit here on a, on a really very simple, very straightforward trade, selling one put option substantially below the, the current uh, share price. Yeah, I was gonna add uh, this because, like, I think like the liquidity implications are like really 
what maybe makes this trade uh, in some ways sometimes less sexy than, uh, let's say, you know, what you've mentioned before, just a one direction of, let's say, try and buy such kind of lotto tickets or like a, or a maybe less um, risky call option as well, because obviously um, you need to have a, an account which supports this, right? And maybe for the, in, the, the ordinary retail investors, this, this can also be um, less intuitive in a way to do, right? It's definitely less intuitive because it's not the way we're trained. Um, I do think the finance industry quite likes to keep options complicated and keep us locked <laughs> out. And that keeps the, the profit margins relatively high. Uh, and I do a lot of these trades every week. And I always think that was just too easy. That, that really shouldn't happen like that. Um, and I think they don't really want us in this. And that's why a lot of brokerages also make it quite hard to get margin accounts. Mm -hmm. I used to be very scared of margins. And I'm a really non-low risk guy, like 90%, 95% of my money is in really long stocks, like your Microsofts, your PayPal's, those kind of things, you know, high uh, cash flow uh, type stocks. And this for me is creating fairly passive income with actually mm -hmm. very, very low risk. Yep. Um, the appeal, I totally get it. You look at a call option, that's only $20. I could make 500 if it goes my way. It sounds good, right? But it, when you factor in the probability of you making money is maybe only 5 or 10%, it suddenly doesn't look so good. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, if I can do a trade with an 80% chance of success like this one here, yeah, I'm going to have to put up $350 in locked up margin in my account. Mm -hmm. I get $100 up front, but I have a sort of probability adjusted a return here of $70 or something mm. on this trade, which might not seem like a lot, but you do it every week. And of course you can do it with slightly higher amounts depending on how big your portfolio is. Yeah, I think like this is really something overlooked, like the in general, actually in investing, the compounding effect, right? And mm -hmm. um, as you say, like these are maybe tiny amounts that you can make with a decent risk here. But over time on an annual basis, this can uh, really compound to a substantial return on your capital. And also um, like just a selling put strategy that I've frankly also did while Neo was declining, of course, um, gives you this kind of, um, a second strategy of also making some money uh, without actually selling the underlying um, asset um, while those um, inevitable times where the stock is not doing as well. So it kind of also helps you on the emotional and mental side in order to um, yeah, buy and hold uh, what I'm usually doing. You know, I'm this very boring investor that I'm usually I'm just um, accumulating and buying more of an underlying uh, long term um, stock and then this options trading around it uh, can kind of add this little bit of, um, you know, also <laughs> entertaining uh, moment of the world and, and, and makes you, you know, like lots of people are now talking about how Lucid or Rivian are doing so well and there's no money to be made in NEO, but that's not the case, right? You, if you know uh, different strategies that you can use. Absolutely. I mean, look at the simple put strategy. You could, you could make, you know, 30% on, on that, which is, which is pretty good with a much, much lower risk than probably than buying Lucid or, or, or Rivian uh, because they're so super volatile. So yeah, I, I think getting over a little bit this sort of fear barrier, what I always say to people is get a paper trading account, get a demo account where you can mm -hmm. trade without your using your real money. And you can get them in any country in the world. Shoot me a message. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you which one to use and tell me where you're based. And do that and do that for like, a month or two or three until you feel comfortable and until you've lost a lot of money on a lot of stupid trades. Uh, and that way you're not losing your own money. And then if you do that and you enjoy the process and you start to understand, hey, this is really where the sweet spot is. It's about essentially leaving emotion at the door and not caring about the stock. And that's why I quite often do these trades on stocks that I really have no, don't own a single stock of. Mm. Though, if you know a lot about a stock like Neo, for example, and you know, I mean, Marcel is the, the, the Neo king; he knows everything about it. Uh, it's it's an advantage for you because you know the little things that are happening. You know, you mm. know the at the money offering has been, has, you know, it's closed. You know when Neo Day is. You know when they're presenting this. You you know the little bits, and that will help you uh, actually make your options trades less risky because the fundamentals still feed into this. It's just. Um, yeah. A, a, a short-term way of making some income yeah? and, and, and actually a very, very low risk way. It's much, much lower risk than going out tomorrow and saying, I'm going to 
throw a thousand dollars at this stock and I hope it goes up next week. Like you have no idea. It's 50, 50 basically. Right. Yeah. Um, coming back to the, the initial um, situation and context around like how Neo chart is looking and, you know, this large wedge pattern and going into Neo day, how uh, maybe you can comment or give your thoughts a little bit uh, around this, how you use the option chain in looking through, let's say a shorter term of what, what might happen with Neo stock. What does the premium tell you and uh, what may be, you know, interesting things to look at also, uh, let's say um, betting on a break of the, the the downtrend, for example, but also maybe uh, how to secure risk. Um, what what is your um, ways of um, using this as a tool? So I mean, you can analyze, and people do. People look for unusual options behavior. Uh, it can give you a bit of an insight into what the so-called called smart money is doing. I personally try not to chase that too hard because mm -hmm. I think. By the time we see it, by the time it's done, they've done their trades and they're still a week ahead of you. Uh, so I think chasing that is sort of like hoping you're going to find something that no one else has seen. There are really smart people out there. They've got really smart algorithms. Uh, they trade at a speed that's a thousand times hours. So I always think when you see those headlines, you know, unusual options behavior in Neo could imply this. Mm. By the time you and me have read it, the guys with the real money have already traded on it. So I kind of wouldn't chase that. I think one of the biggest mistakes we make is getting excited about headlines and getting excited about the news out there. Exactly. By the time it's out there, it's kind of old news, right? And I mean, you see it a lot. I mean, Marcel is at the forefront of, of Neo News. You report stuff often before you then see it two or three days later in, in the financial press. Uh, so I, I personally wouldn't chase that. What I would prefer to do is do your options trades where you limit both your upside and your downside. So say if NEO goes from $40 to $60, okay, marvelous, you get 50% up. But I prefer not to get the high upside and instead get a high chance of an upside. So mm -hmm. I'd rather take, you know, 80% chance of making 10% rather than the 30% chance of making 70%. Mm -hmm. And then repeating those trades a bit like a robot uh, is I think where you can really get some money and you get some, get some cash and some income out of your portfolio, which essentially acts as the guarantee for your options trades, right? Uh, which, I mean, I must always say, I always advocate very, very low margins. So, you know, use 10% or something like that. Don't, don't go all out because things can change, right? Markets can tank. So be, be very, very cautious with that. Right. And um, what are your views on the topic of options and the implications on stocks and, and the stock markets in general? So one example would be um, people are talking about this so-called gamma squeeze happening in Tesla, uh, maybe recently. So with the, the latest run and the implications of um, maybe people buying call options. Do you have any views on that? You know, I think a lot of that is just if you want to get a YouTube video with a, with a million hits, you 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 write gamma squeeze on Tesla or on Neo. <laughs> it's just one of those things. Uh, it's a bit like the the short squeeze story, just because we saw it happen with AMC at the beginning of the year. Some people made ten thousand percent in a day or something. Everybody's sort of hoping for that. Everyone's hoping for that lottery ticket. Um, I I think again, by the time we see it, you know. There are bankers who are in the office in the morning at 6 a.m. and they will have had automated alerts and, and automated algorithms. They would have traded that thing as soon as possible the market was open, possibly in private in a dark pool before the market was open. And mm. by the time you and I wake up to it and read it at 2 p.m., it's kind of like, you know, is this really what, what you want to be doing? So I, I personally counsel against chasing that unicorn, mm -hmm. chasing that 100x opportunity. Um, I think with, with stocks generally, I just say compound, add to it every month, be steady with it, buy good quality stocks, don't chase the latest hype. And if you want to get extra income, you're not satisfied because you don't like waiting 10, 20, 30 years to become a gazillionaire, have a look at options trading because this is actually something you can use that's low risk, small trades, and you can get some income right here, right now. And I know lots of people who live entirely off options trading. They've got money. 
but they don't spend their money because they're too obsessed to compound their money. They never want to sell any of their shares, right? Mm. Uh, and once you look at compounding for too long, that's basically what happens, right? We never ever want to sell anything. So uh, I think that's why this is kind of a, a good add-on for people who just aren't quite satisfied with, with waiting for the fortune to land. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I think that would also be kind of my summary or takeaway that um, options are kind of um, you know, given... They're giving you literally options in terms of also supporting some uh, strategies. So, as I mentioned before, like um, I have, uh, yeah, I was uh, really happy to play some of those uh, long-term dated call options on both Tesla and Neo during also the the run up. So this is uh, such kind of a, a being part of this stock uh, squeeze experience. Um, this is like something very remarkable. You can make like. 2,000, 4,000 uh, percent gains on just some some of these long dated um, call options. So that can mm -hmm. uh, be something very interesting and maybe uh, also what is kind of out there as an uh, yeah, imagination of what's going to happen if you buy a call. But as you've outlined, there is so much more sophistication to it. Um, it's quite uh, depending on the situation and um, you should rather actually think about how you can use it um, also to mitigate some risk. And so I think um, people should possibly go and learn around it. And maybe, as you mentioned, uh, just try and um, yeah, kind of experiment with it a little bit uh, because, and frankly, even losing some money on it, like maybe just $100 and something like that. And that's just giving, giving you the feeling like how quickly they can expire worthless at some point. And um, yeah, but um, unless you don't have this experience really, uh, then, um, yeah, it's also really ha hard to uh, kind of get a feeling for it, in my views. I, I think it really is. And I mean, I, I, I teach it and I see the, the, the challenge people have is I run a webinar actually on this this very morning uh, for, mm -hmm. for, for some of our community. And, you know, people who don't come from a completely the stock options route, you tell them, well, you can make money whether it goes up or down. And it just sort of doesn't really quite sink in. So you kind of have to do those trades. And like you okay, say, if you don't mind losing $50 or $100, you can do it with real money. I, I would generally say do it with kind of virtual cash so it doesn't really hurt the pocket. Because there is there is one aspect to it I, I'd like quite like to mention, and that's volatility is a huge part of options trading that mm -hmm. isn't obvious. It doesn't show up in the charts. It doesn't show mm -hmm. up in the numbers. And you can literally make or lose money with an options trade, with the stock price staying exactly the same. Mm -hmm. And people don't appreciate why it's going up or down. And that's a really important thing to appreciate uh, is, is basically historic volatility uh, around uh, stocks. Uh, and that also shapes the kind of options trade that you do, you do, do, do. So if you, um, if, if I, if you don't mind, Marcel, I'll show you here one more little chart. Sure. Uh, yeah. So, you know, the chart we were just looking at, which was this, this, short put you're selling a put to basically um make money while the stock is not really going anywhere right that's sort of the strategy like i've been doing this with alibaba for the last six months and so I, I keep selling puts there at 130 now at 110 and I'll, i don't know maybe it'll go lower even so <laughs> i can make some money on that position now what i apologize for all the numbers but okay right now with neo's volatility today which is super low the scary bit where you make big losses is really only this little area down here. If the volatility jumps up tomorrow, because say the share price moves up, there's a lot more trading, a lot more volatility in the market. Can you see what happens to the scary red losing triangle? It moves up. So irrespective of the share price moving, there is this beast behind it that's called volatility. And that basically kills you a chance to make a profit. So on the chart here on the left, I'm just going to highlight the area in which you make money. So at the top is are the dates going forward and then the, the prices going from $33 to $40 where you're making money. So this whole area here, you're making money in. If volatility jumps higher, that whole area becomes way, way smaller. It sort of halves. So the stock price needs to really, really shoot up a lot more for you to start making some money here. And that's why... I think a lot of retail options traders get burned because they don't see this. It doesn't show up in the charts. Um, and the way you can find this is, uh, let me um, show you a, a, a stock chart here. So this is tradingview.com, which is a free chart, uh, completely free. 
And they have an indicator called HV, which is historic volatility. So you can see here the current volatility down here, 66. It's a meaningless number. So what I do is I put a line at that level, and then you go back in time, and you can see, are we usually above the current point of volatility or below it? And what you see is that for most of NEO's trading life, we were above it. So actually, NEO's volatility is really, really low. Now, the other way you can find that out is if you don't like searching things, you can just type into Google NEO historic volatility. Uh, historic volatility, if I could spell volatility. And then Market Chameleon is a great website. It's completely free. You open that up. It asks you to sign in, but you really don't need to. And it tells you right at the top, NEO's implied volatility is in the 37 percentile rank. That's low, right? It means 63 percent of the time it was higher. So that's a super, super important thing to understand if you actually want to make money with options. And there is a simple rule you can follow. When volatility is low, like it is right now for NEO, you want to buy options. So like do what Marcel is doing. You're buying call options. Uh, and you want to trade very little because it's not a great time to be an options trader when volatility is low. low. So for these kind of stocks, actually, I don't have any new options at the moment for this reason. So you trade less, you make smaller trades. You wait and you celebrate and you jump up and down for joy when volatility is really high for a stock. So say Alibaba's volatility is like 96% or something crazy just because the thing keeps crashing. And that's when you sell options. So you could sell puts uh, or you could sell things that are a little bit more sophisticated, like credit spreads, iron corridors, strangled straddles, and so on, where you have two sides here. Um, so that's, I think, a really, really important point to make. And um, you also asked me, Marcel, one thing, uh, one trade that I would actually execute on NEO right now. But we can maybe, if you want to talk about the volatility for something else for a moment, we can jump back to this in, in a second. Uh, no, let's go for it. Sounds good. Oh, okay, cool. So... If I haven't confused you sufficiently, I'm about to. Uh, basically, you can trade one option, right? So you can buy a call option and, or you can sell it. You can also use both legs of it. So you can do a trade with two options or more. And it allows you to do something a little bit more sophisticated. And uh, I tend to only do these, mostly do these kind of trades. So what I'm doing here is I'm buying, this is Neo, a December uh, sorry, it says 18th here because I'm in Hong Kong. It's December 17th for most of the world. Um, a put at $30 and I'm selling a put at $35. Might seem counterintuitive. Why do I do that? Because by buying and selling, I offset the volatility impact. I basically neutralize it because one, one side's going to hurt from it. The other side's going to benefit from it. So it stabilizes my, my volatility impact. And therefore, uh, this kind of crazy, scary triangle situation doesn't happen. I protect myself against it. And that's why most professional options traders don't trade single leg options. They always trade pairs or even more complicated things. And, and what happens with, with this trade? It's a, it's a nice one. So NEO is at the moment here at uh, you know $39. It looks a little bit like the, um, sorry, I actually have a pen in my hand. <laughs> I can write a little bit more clearly. Uh, apologies for the horrible 39 here. So uh, $39, that's where we are right now. I make money as long as we are above $34. So at $34 is where I start losing money. However, the amount of money I lose is limited. It's capped. Right? There is a maximum to it. It doesn't continue downwards here if forever and ever, like most uh, single leg options trades. It gives me a, a base, which is nice because it limits my, my, my damage. And it therefore also limits the amount of margin I need to put up or the amount of cash my broker freezes in my account because my broker can see, okay, the maximum this guy can lose on that is not infinity. The maximum is you know this fixed amount here. And on the way up, I also fix the ma maximum profit I can make, which is um, basically $76 here. So I'm getting $76 up front. 
Um, my worst case downside, I think, is $380 here. And that's actually a very nice return with a pretty high probability of doing this because I will notice if NEO goes down too low. If NEO goes to, you know, say 36 or 35, I just close the trade. I still make money. So if you're looking for something that's one step above just selling puts or calls, credit spreads is what these things are called. You can Google it. You can look it up. I actually have a free options course as well if you want to look that up. Um, and this makes you a little bit smarter. And most importantly, it protects you from volatility, which you may or may not fully understand. But at least having these two legs offsets the scary risk of losing money when the stock price isn't moving, which is what, what a lot, lot of options trades will, will give you. So uh, there, there is that. If you want to download that, as I say, here is the link to it. I've also put in here the links to the options calculator we used, uh, the bar chart, which is a great site if you want to find some options trades. So if you go on barchart.com, you can see the probabilities on here on the right. Uh, you can see how much money you can make. So it'll help you to actually find some option trades. And again, it's free. Um, and then what I would recommend is a is a paper trading or a demo account, uh, which many brokerages have. Think or Swim, for example, has a great one, but there are many out there. And that way you can learn and you can you can appreciate and understand this without taking any risks. Um, and the beauty really of options trading is it's not like you're ever missing an opportunity. It's not like this stock's going to go to 10 times and therefore I'm missing out here. There is always another options trade tomorrow. There are an unlimited, infinite number of great trades you can execute tomorrow across any number of stocks. So you never have this FOMO thing of what if Tesla goes to 1500? Should I buy today? You know, this, this is kind of is, is removed with options, which is also why, why I really like it. I, I don't get too emotional about these stocks. So, um, yeah, awesome. Uh, you, I'm speechless. Uh, this is really um, exciting stuff and shows that you have really a deep insight into all of this. So I would yeah, recommend that everyone um, kind of checks out Felix's channel and also um, yeah, those uh, webinars, which are surely valuable and uh, maybe get uh, the feet on the ground and uh, just try it out and uh, up and going. Um, likewise, uh, in my Patreon, I not have such kind of... Um, uh, stock um, uh, option trades because that's not my focus most of the times, but I do give some um, trade signals whether, um, whenever I do uh, some more of those risky trades, which I indicate that they are um, very likely to lose money or also some <laughs> of the more <laughs> some of the more conservative ones. And uh, I'll definitely also give an update here on the channel how it goes because certainly, uh, you know, I'm more the fundamental guy, but on the fundamentals here, this uh, chart looks interesting going into uh, the end of the year now with a uh, catalyst like Neo Day and uh, particularly also if we look into 2022, uh, what's going to happen with Neo um, on the fundamental company side. And so, yeah, options are kind of part of this, as I mentioned, can add some more spice. And so, yeah, thanks again, uh, Felix, for coming here on the channel. Um, I, I don't know, like uh, anything we... Uh, didn't mention that you would like to um, add on top of this. And um, anyways, we should repeat this. I have the feeling and do maybe some uh, other takes on, let's say, the dark pools, for instance, but also sure. some more of those option trades that you see out there. Yeah. Marcel, I just want to say a huge thank you. I truly appreciate you you having me on here. Um, I, I've been watching your Neo videos uh, for, for absolute ages as well. And we sort of have this connection, me being based in Hong Kong and you obviously having spent a great deal of time in China as well. Um, yeah. So no, I truly appreciate it. I would always say, guys, be smart with options and trades. Don't do anything crazy. Don't ever bet the farm on stuff. The whole point is to make small incremental bits of profit doesn't sound as sexy as, you know, the great big risky things, but it's how you make a lot of money in the long run. Um, and yeah, if you want to check out my website, I put the link up earlier. You can, um, I've got free options courses and things like that as well. All the webinars we do are all completely free. I, I did actually two this weekend on exactly the subject. So um, do come in and, and check it out. I truly appreciate it, Marcel. It's always lovely to have you on here. Um, I think Marcel also on Neo. I mean, I think we've had a pretty tough six months here really with yeah. with the whole chip shortage and and COVID and everything um i think you tweeted the other day that the uh, the malaysian factories seem to be back up to 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 production levels 
which will hopefully mean going into 2022, we'll get to the production output that we are all expecting and hoping for. And um, yeah, I think Neo Day is going to be a catalyst. I think it's going to be a lot of excitement. I think that'll bring a lot of excitement back in. Uh, there'll still be a little bit of this, but yeah, but how, can they produce it? How much can they get out? So I sort of think uh, probably in, in Q1, when we get the, the AT7 rolling out the door, that's when we start to see some, um, some hopefully some real movement here. So um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's really exciting about... times. So um, see what exactly. happens. It's, it's going to uh, keep being exciting because uh, I think like in case the, the chip shortage is you know kind of solved there will be other things so uh, Neo is still a growth company a startup so things go wrong um, but, and it's fairly in focus also not only in the media but also with retail investors and uh, so uh, I think uh, lots of ups and downs to be expected and while Neo uh, Day will be a great catalyst in my views um, we don't know exactly how this will also reflect on the share price right because of course sure. Um, investors are forward looking. And um, of course, I also mentioned like my last video, there are uh, even greater forces possibly uh, in the background, let's say that uh, people are betting against Neo. That can also be the case, right? So uh, we'll never know how this will actually play out. But I mean, that's why I think lots of people are really excited also about following the story and the stock. And so, um, yeah, great to have you on the channel again. And I think, um, yeah, uh, viewers should let us know in the comments uh, whether or not they liked it, what they want to see us doing in the future, possibly um, with this Absolutely. collaboration and, um, yeah, hopefully supporting us, um, sharing it, giving a like and, um, yeah, subscribing to our channels. So, Absolutely. Myself, yeah, thank, thank you so much. I think, I think everybody truly appreciates uh, what you do and keeping people informed and keeping people calm and their feet on the ground. So thank you very much, Marcel, and, and a real pleasure, a real pleasure being, being on your channel. Cool. So enjoy the rest of your weekend in Hong Kong. Oh, it might be already over. And then um, let's see what the next week brings. And uh, thanks, everyone, for watching and see you in the next one. <laughs> thanks, Marcel. Bye bye.